we can fall into social media addiction much easier than even drug addiction because it's free. I need to go physically and buy drugs down the street from a dealer. They're harder to get. Whereas online social media gaming, hey, you got a computer? You connected? To become a member in most of these open platforms is free. There are now thousands of servers that you could join for free. Of course, they uh, lure you into uh, giving away some of your money for different types of status, like the legend status, or buying different types of armor, or changing your avatar or having more functionality in your system. But I would say, as uh, quoting Catherine Albrecht, that social media gaming addiction is like digital crack. It's not the crack that you buy down the street. It's not the cocaine. It's digital. And it's free. And it's everywhere. And it's available. And so the bounds and the limits of different types of addictions have almost gone with social media addiction. When I think of alcoholism, alcohol addiction, I need to go and have some money and buy something from a store and drink it. Whereas in a social media context, you're always on, always connected. You just need an, a Wi-Fi enabled access point. And if you can't afford it at home, go to your local library. You'll still get it there. And if you can't go to the library, then go to your school. It's absolutely everywhere. And so when people say to me, you have a choice, you've got control, you can choose to have that application on your phone or on your desktop, I say, sure you can. You know, there's a lot of people that, that will say, I have control over most things that I do in my life. But it's another temptation. It's another trigger. And some of us, as we said earlier, are more susceptible to these triggers. And so a notification ping on my handset that comes installed by default on my phone is a trigger that I can't stop. I can deselect, I can remove the default, I can change my settings, but how many of us do that? How many of us even spend time worrying about the settings on our phone? We just want connectivity. We just want to send that message with the attachment. We just want to send that instant message or call somebody. And so how much control do we really have over these devices is debatable to me. That three-year-old who had that iPad placed in front of it as a birthday present or a hand-me-down or a gift from person A or B didn't ask for the iPad they didn't ask to be connected via some kind of uh, transducer or, you know, it being like an insulin in a diabetic where I can't live without it. You know, digital crack, to use that kind of uh, analogy again, you know, it's like a syringe. But instead of the syringe, it's Wi-Fi. And so the connectivity is the issue. And so I, I didn't choose, that three-year-old didn't choose to have control over its uh, exposure to a device. And the other thing is, tell a drug addict they've got control over their drug addiction. And they'll turn around and say to you, give me another 50 bucks. I need another hit. I need to find another spot on my arm. So in a gaming or a social media or internet environment context of addiction, who's got control? I don't even have to ask you for a hit. And or for money to, to satisfy that hit. And so when I hear about parents who have deleted their children's World of Warcraft account, and you can go online and you can see these young people in their teens who have gone totally berserk because their parents have removed the World of Warcraft account. Their parents are trying to save them. They don't know how. There are two types of ways to actually get off. One is to go cold turkey. And many people have advocated this. The other is to slowly monitor what you're doing, become more and more aware of yourself, and then basically minimize the amount of time you spend online. You see, all of these social media platforms have many positive utilities. One of them is forming communities of practice where people can come together and talk about a topic or, a, or, a, or an educational context. But when they're misused and they become lifestyle choices, and you can't stop, well then they cause a great deal of harm to the individual. And so I would advocate for the cold turkey approach, which is what the Chinese are investing in, in Dashong detox camp, for example, in China. Back in 2006, I walked into one of my classes on the social implications of electronic commerce at the time. And 
I held up the cover of an IEEE magazine, um, Spectrum, and it had a young person with some kind of helmet with these plugs in there monitoring what was happening to the brain activity while he was offline. Further down the track, the great um, Sundance Film Festival, festival film uh, Web Junkies shoots in to a detox camp of young people wearing sort of prisoner-style clothing and somebody's filming the young man who's sitting on one of these double bunks and he's just convulsively crying. <laughs> the reporter says to him, what have you done? What have you done? <laughs> I've used the internet. You've used the internet and you're in here, like with a straitjacket. You don't have connectivity. You can't talk to your parents on the telephone. You're not allowed to use an SMS. He was collapsing. His whole world was ending because he didn't have internet connectivity. It's nuts. It's nuts. Two days ago, on Weibo uh, in China, a couple decided to have a sexual encounter, self-filmed, in a Japanese clothing store. It went so viral that in front of the same store, young people, adults, flocked to take their selfie, hashtag selfie, in front of the store name where this couple had uh, been engaged in this um, private act in a public space, which I would deem vulgar. So you're in a public space. You, should, you certainly should not be engaged in such a private activity. Do that in the confines of your own home. But they, somebody pressed forward. The company, the retail company, was blamed for the uh, video going viral on Weibo and WeChat. But people flocked. They weren't ashamed. Wow, well, it's cool. Look, I should do the same. So I'm just as cool as that couple. What kind of values are we setting in society when we're stooping so low to mimic that? Is, is it a joke? Okay, it's a joke. It's a joke that went viral. And the exposure impact of that joke was exposed to young people below the age of consent, below the conception of what that act actually means, below the conception of A, B, C, and D. So the compression and the instantaneous messaging means we're saying a lot more in a shorter space of time and we're not allowing ourselves to develop through periods of time as we used to. Our three-year-olds have access to whatever YouTube clip they want while you're watching or while you're not watching. You can put on filters. Go ahead. They'll sit at the friend's place. And so when you try to have a conversation with your young child and the child says, hey, hey, I've seen it on YouTube. Don't, don't talk to me. I know, what you're, I know what you're about to say. There's your social media impact because it's not just the messaging. It's the exposure like YouTube. YouTube is one of the fundamental video social media platforms. And so my son rocks up to the orthodontist and you know, the orthodontist really serious, you know, George, you need to have this done to your teeth. And he goes to him, oh, yeah, and this and this and this. And the doctor looks at him and says, how do you know that? YouTube. There's nothing that hasn't been filmed and nothing that hasn't been added to YouTube. So what's happened to the spontaneity of learning? What's happened to us going, oh, I'm listening to this for the first time. And my dad's telling me this. Oh, I'm listening to this for the first time. Gee, that teacher's amazing. Just YouTube everything. In fact, why don't you life vlog your life? Like that couple in the, 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 the Japanese retail store in China. What if I filmed everything? What if I had a little Jiminy Cricket on my shoulders filming everything? And that's where we're going. Video is the next audio visual, is the next big thing that's going to occur to social media. It's not enough to send a message. It's not enough to send audio. It's not enough to send a picture that I've changed with Photoshop. Video is coming of everything. Storage space is increasing. Miniaturization of cameras embedded in everything. There is no private space. There is no private space for me to make a mistake. There is no private space for me to reflect and to go, God, you know, I made a mistake today. Because before I have a chance to tell God I made a mistake, the mistake gone, has gone viral on YouTube. There is no time to reflect. 
there is no time to go, I need to reclaim myself. What did I do today? Why did I do it? What didn't I do so well? Where's that meditation to unwind? We're constant, 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 constant. Instead of going, you know what? I think I feel like praying. You know what? I'm thankful for actually being alive and breathing. Instead, people are saying, I'm too busy. Send me a message. Just WeChat me. I was in China sitting around a round table, uh, of all things, at a reality TV show called Star of Outlook. And I said, well, can people give me the email addresses? We were about to break away from this 10-person table. Oh, you don't have WeChat? No, I said, I refuse to be reduced to a QR code. Give me your email address. Not one person gave me the email address. And so when you choose to get off Facebook, your friends refuse to tell you about the party on the weekend. Oh, you're not on Facebook? I'm not going to spend extra time for you. Were they a real friend? <laughs>